Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about genetics. Now, genetics is a very interesting and it's probably one of my favorite units to teach. Um, but just know that going into it, there's going to be a, a bunch of new vocab that you're going to need to know and be able to apply. So anytime you see any new words, be sure to highlight and underline them, make them stick out so that you want, you have something easy to go back to and look um, when you're trying to figure out your practice problems. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing you think about when you think of genetics is a trait. Okay, this is one of those vocab words. A trait is a physical characteristic of an organism. Now there's lots of different traits and and some organisms have these traits and others don't, but I just picked two common examples of a trait for humans, which would be height and hair color. Okay, now if we were to look at everybody in this room and we were to line them up like the girls on the slide, you would notice that everybody has a different expression of height and hair color. Okay, and because of that, a person's trait is expressed differently and that is known as a phenotype. Okay, so if I were to have all these girls line up from tallest to shortest, those would be different phenotypes. Somebody who is the tallest, somebody who's average height, somebody who is short, or if we were to look at their hair and go from light hair color to dark hair color, you would see a gradient of blondes and maybe reds and browns and dark browns and or black hair. Those are all examples of expressions of a trait or the word phenotype. Make sure that you highlight or underline that because that is very important. Now, when we look at your DNA, we know we can sequence that, we can transcribe and translate it into a protein, and the protein that is produced controls the traits that we, that we express. So it controls our phenotype. So another way of thinking about that is that the genes or the sequences of DNA within our chromosomes code for particular proteins and or a trait. That's the connection. And so depending upon your gene that you inherit and the genes that I inherit for a particular trait like height or hair color, the expression of that gene is going to be slightly different because your sequence of nitrogen bases will vary from my sequence of nitrogen bases. Okay, now if you keep DNA in, in, in your mind, all the DNA that humans have and other eukaryotic organisms have exist in pairs because we get our DNA from two different sources, our mom and our dad. So because we get two sources of genetic information, our chromosomes form during cell division, they form this homologous pair, okay? And a homologous pair is defined as a pair of chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad, that are the same length, so the same number of nitrogen bases long, and they control the genes for the same trait. So this, if this is the very first chromosome that we have, the longest chromosome, maybe this contains gene sequences for height and hair color, or maybe it contains genes for um, whether our earlobes are attached or whether we can roll our tongue, okay? that Those would be homologous chromosomes. There are slight differences in our genes, like I've said before, and those slight differences produce slightly different proteins for height and hair color. The, the term allele, okay, this is a, another important vocab word. The term allele is the different versions of a trait. And when we do genetics problems, we represent alleles with a single letter. 
and that letter repre is that letter is specific to the the trait that we're talking about. So if we're talking about eye color, we might use capital B and a lowercase b as two alleles for eye color because when we think about the colors that I gave you, brown and blue both start with the letter B, so we're going to be using B's to represent the alleles for eye color. Capital B, lowercase b. Okay, now we don't get just one allele, right? Because we don't get just one chromosome. We get two chromosomes. And so each chromosome contains one allele. Mom gave us one chromosome, and that gave us one allele. Dad gave us one chromosome, which has another allele. So the combination of those two alleles determines an individual's genotype. Okay, so when you think or see the word genotype, again, this one's going to come up a lot, you need to think of a person's genes. And you cannot see a person's genes. They're inside your DNA. But for genetics problems, we represent a genotype with two letters. So if we look at these mice over here, this dad mouse and this, and this offspring mouse, we're looking at the dad's homologous chromosomes. This is for one pair of chromosomes, for one trait, and the offspring's homologous chromosomes. The dad's father gave him the allele capital B, okay? The dad mouse's mother gave him the allele lowercase b. So that means that the combination of those two alleles, you put them together, the big B and the little b, that is the dad's genotype, capital B, lowercase b. Now if we look at the offspring's genotype, the offspring has two lowercase b's because his father had to give him a lowercase b and his mother had to give him the other lowercase b, which gives the offspring the two recessive alleles. So this brings us to, again, more important vocabulary. The first is the word homozygous. When you think of the word homo, you should think same. And that's what this word means. It means a person's genotype that has inherited two identical alleles. Or another synonym for the word homozygous is the word purebred. The genetics problems that you'll see in practice, either later on in these notes or for homework, you're going to see both of these words interchange, homozygous and purebred. There's two ways to write the genotype that, that would be homozygous, and that would be writing two capital alleles or two lowercase alleles in a person's genotype. The other combination of the alleles would be inheriting two different alleles, and that is defined as being heterozygous. Hetero meaning different. And hybrid also means different. And that would give you a capital and a lowercase allele making up your genotype. So here's how I remember the difference between homozygous and heterozygous. I think of, of relationships. A homosexual relationship is a person that's in a relationship with another individual of the same sex, and a, heteros a heterosexual relationship is a person in a relationship with, a, with another of the opposite sex. So homozygous, same, hetero, different. You have to keep these in mind. Now let's move on to the discovery of genetics. And you've all been waiting for Gregor Mendel. He is known as the father of genetics. He was an Austrian monk that studied and observed pea plants over multiple generations. And what he, he noticed was he noticed that based off of the traits of the parent generation, that there was a link between their genes and their traits and the inheritance of those genes and the phenotypes of the offspring, which led to the field of genetics. 
And so because he noticed this link between meiosis genes and inheritance, he is known as the father of genetics. And he came up with four important rules that we will be following throughout this unit and helps to explain the inheritance of particular traits. His first rule is the rule of unit factors. And this simply states that there are two alleles for every gene. So if I were to look at the gene that would code for height in a plant, there would only be two different alleles possible. You would either have a plant that was like six feet tall, or you would have a plant that's like four feet tall. So the two different alleles would be a capital T for tall and a lowercase t for short. There was no plant in between, like at five foot, and there was no plant beyond either taller or shorter than six or four feet. So there's two alleles, capital T, lowercase t. That's it. His second rule is called the rule of dominance. Okay, I've been trying to avoid the word dominant and recessive earlier in, in this um, presentation. So here's what his rule says. His rule says that a dominant allele will mask or hide a recessive allele. And that's why I put this picture here. Dominant alleles are always represented with a capital letter. And recessive alleles are always represented with lowercase letters. Because a capital letter is taller, it's bigger, and it masks the lowercase alleles. Kind of like it's more dominant, it's more in your face, versus a recessive allele that's kind of meek and shy and small. Okay, When you write these alleles, you need to be very careful about being able to distinguish between capitals and lower cases. Now some of you in here might have beautiful handwriting and some of you in here might have not so beautiful handwriting. You need to make sure that your handwriting is as neat and legible as possible during this unit. If we are looking at the letter, um, if we're using the letter S to represent our trait, you wouldn't know just by looking out of this letter out of context whether this S is capital or lowercase. Okay, now next to another letter, you might be like, oh, that one's capitalized. This one's lowercase. Well, you need to make it easy for the person, either myself or somebody else grading your paper. And so there's one of two ways that you can write your lowercase letters to help distinguish from capital. You need to put an underline, like an underscore, underneath your lowercase letters, or you need to write your lowercase letters in cursive or something loopy, right? Here's a capital T, a lowercase t might be a little bit curvy and loopy, or um, a P, a lowercase p, might be in cursive, or if you don't do cursive very well, just put an underscore underneath it. Make it easier for yourself to distinguish between capitals and lower cases and make it easier for myself or somebody else grading. Because if we cannot tell the difference between a capital letter and a lowercase letter, it will be wrong. Okay, so now let's look at how dominant and recessive alleles come together to make different possible genotypes. If you inherit a genotype, one allele from each parent, and both of those alleles are the same, that genotype is described as being homozygous dominant. Two capital alleles, they're both the same. If we were to interpret that genotype to a phenotype, that would give a person the dominant phenotype. Now, if you were to inherit a capital and a lowercase allele as your genotype, you would be classified as being heterozygous. And when we interpret your genotype into a phenotype, that would mean you would, would express the dominant phenotype and whatever that would be. The only way a person can express a recessive phenotype is if they are homozygous recessive. They inherit two recessive alleles because any other combination of alleles, homozygous dominant or heterozygous, they both contain a dominant allele, which means that that allele masks whatever the second allele is. Doesn't matter if it's the same or different, it would mask it. 